Robert Creighton Jr., age 45, was married to Athaliah Clayton, age 46. Robert Creighton Jr. is an actor who played in various television shows and movies since childhood. He's played in movies such as Mr. Bojangles, Ant-Man, Freeborn, The Staircase, Being Mary Jane, Airborne, and many others. He also played in over 90 projects on several TV networks such as BT, MTV, TIU TV, PBS, NBC, Hulu, Disney, and OWN Network. He attended an upstate prep school where he did very well in sports. He then started performing in skits and doing comedy before becoming an actor. Robert Creighton had a long history of mental illness and substance abuse. Since 2014 police were called to his home for various reasons, but he was never arrested. Most recently on January 3rd in 2022 for an involuntary commitment by his family. Athaliah Creighton was a Jamaican-American. She grew up in North Carolina and Miami. She was an army veteran where she served as a sergeant in the 2nd Infantry Division as a heavy equipment mechanic. She studied psychology at North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University, and worked as a certified life coach and interior designer. She also was a public notary for the state of North Carolina. The couple had four children, 18-year-old Kasim, 16-year-old Nyla, and 10-year-old Nasir. The couple has a 24-year-old son who lives on his own but visits the family home frequently. He will remain unnamed due to privacy concerns. 18-year-old Kasim was the co-owner and co-founder of Only Chase Money Apparel, a clothing and brand design company. Kasim attended Ragsdale High School. 16-year-old Nyla was a talented artist who loved to draw and make crafts. She was extremely creative and artistic. She attended Ragsdale High School. Ten-year-old Nasir was known as being a fun person to be around. He had an energetic presence. His favorite pastime was playing with his cousins. Nasir attended Union Hill Elementary School. The family lived at 2734 Mossy Meadow Drive in High Point, North Carolina. High Point, North Carolina is located primarily in Guilford County. It has a population of just under 115,000 citizens. On Saturday, January 7, in 2023 a young man and woman began knocking on doors begging for help from neighbors. Calls began pouring into the police from the community about the couple asking for help. Let's listen to portions of the 911 call and the dispatcher speaking to police. There's someone knocking up in front of my house saying someone tried to kill them. Somebody was shot in the house at 2734. The man is saying that it was his father. He said he said he's he sure that he still has the gun. Officers arrived within minutes. They encountered a young man and woman stating they needed help. The terrified young man told police that he woke to his father pointing a gun to his head. He was able to pull the clip out of the gun. He woke up his girlfriend and they ran from the home. When police approached the home they found it eerily silent. When nobody would answer they forced entry. Inside they found Athaliah, Kasim, Nyla, and Nasir all dead from gunshot injuries. Robert Creighton Jr. was also found dead from a single self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. Crime scene investigators spent the rest of the day and into the night processing the scene and gathering evidence. Reporters spoke to the young lady who called 911. Waking up to that, like you're like pretty scared. I was just like, that's never happened here. And like for it to just happen at my house, especially it's like, oh my God, like what do I do? So I just decided to call 911 because I was like, I'll just leave it up to them because I don't want to put my life or my family's life in risk. High Point Police Chief J. Travis Stroud and Lieutenant Patrick Welch spoke at a news conference about the murders. 
multiple victims in an incident, uh, murder, suicide. In my 27, all pushing the 28 years of this police department, we never had anything like this happen before. Uh, the closest I could think is back in late 95 or early 96, we had a multiple homicide incident on the East Great Extension. That tells you how long ago that was. The streets don't even exist like that anymore. You know, we, had, we got different pieces of the puzzle we're working on here as a police department now. Number one is the investigative side. That's our primary responsibility is that crime body element uh, to make sure we bring offenders to justice. And I think this case, from what I can tell, uh, all the, the ends are wrapped up. I don't think there's going to be a lot of conclusion to go on after this. All the big questions that will go on after this will never be able to answer as a police department. That's one piece of the puzzle. Uh, there's another piece of the puzzle for us as a law enforcement agency. We have to monitor our officers now. This was a heavy duty crime scene. I have no doubt about it. When I came to the police department and go to the crime scene, I have gotten some details on it. And so we may have to watch out for our own, our own officers and their mental health um, and how they're going to push through this incident. While I know we're supposed to pull in an armor every single day and just sort of push through, and they did. They did a phenomenal job of pushing through that day. Um, this is going to be a long term thing. We have to recover from it see that you can unsee. Uh, so we'll keep make sure to monitor our folks and that'll be an internal effort for our police department through our city. Uh, that's a big piece of the puzzle. In this incident, it started around on Saturday morning the 7th. Uh, I think we got the first call about 7 or 5 in the morning uh, from multiple residences on uh, Boston Meadow uh, claiming two individuals going door to door, banging on the door. Basically say they needed help. Our officers responded immediately, made contact with them, and that's where we were pushed to the address, uh, the actual address on Boston Meadow. And our officers made entry and then found the crime scene with multiple deceased inside the house, all family members related to each other. Um, and that's where our investigation started. Um, so it's been a long and arduous process. We apologize for delaying this long to do some sort of follow up, but we felt like it was the right thing to do to take our time once we fought the program to resolution a little bit, uh, make sure we got the details right. Now, the third attempt once gets up here, uh, do we discuss this as a group? Uh, there's certain information that we're just not going to release. Uh, I'll also ask Lieutenant Welch to sort of hold back on some of the investigative details. I know this has made national news and many different outlets and people have questions, and but there's always so many things that we're going to answer. Uh, we, we just have a duty to investigate properly, uh, but it's not to, to leave anything else. And again, out of that respect, the family is one of the biggest things, a piece of this causal right now. So what I'll do is I'll turn it over to Lieutenant Welch, and he'll go through some anything and then work up with some questions. Go ahead, Reporter. I do want to say that the investigation is moving forward uh, very well and expeditiously. Um, we have been in contact with the affected family, uh, and they are cooperating with us fully. Um, and as the Chief said, there is some information that we are going to hold back. Um, that's just to protect the integrity of the investigation. Uh, but at this time, I am at a point where uh, we can announce that the offender uh, and one of the deceased, Robert Jeffrey Creighton, is being looked at as the primary uh, person who committed this act. Um, we will also release, and I think it's been put out in the, the updated press release, uh, his wife, uh, Thalia Creighton, age 46, and one of the children, uh, Kassine Creighton, age 18. Um, at this point, uh, I will try to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, we, can, we can go from that, yes. Uh, the press release said that two other people inside the home escaped. Were they related to the victims? That is correct. Uh, we are going to release their names at this time. Um, two surviving victims did, did escape the residence. Uh, one of them is a direct relation and the other was an acquaintance. Um, can you really as to how they were murdered? Was it gunshot, stabbing, uh, strangulation? Or? Yes, uh, I can't release that um, the deceased did die of gunfire. Yes, sir. Um, so, the, the two kids ran out of the house um, around 7 a.m., but do you know what time the kids were actually turned? Did they find them when they woke up? Did it happen a long time before that, or did it happen? It happened concurrently around the same time. Um, when they exited the house, uh, part of the investigation that we're going to be looking into is the timeline of occurrences that happened inside the house. Uh, but the time they exited the house and sought help from neighbors, uh, it was all occurring around that same time. Uh, you, you can uh, do you possibly know what led up to this? Um, why it transpired? 
uh, note, um, and that's going to be a piece of the investigation, and I've expressed this to the family as we may never know why. Um, what goes through uh, the hearts and minds of the person that would do this um, sometimes dies with them. We don't have any indication right now as to the why, but that's part of what we're looking Did Robert have any mental health issues? Uh, we have information from the family that he was suffering with some mental illness. Uh, we responded to the house uh, in January of last year where he was served uh, an involuntary commitment. Uh, we are still looking into past uh, involvements. Uh, I can't speak to as the reasoning under the involuntary commitment, but we do believe it was taken out by the family and we served those papers. Yes, sir. Did Robert have the gun legally? Um, we don't know all that yet. We're still um, tracing uh, the firearm that was recovered from the scene. Uh, that's, that's, we're still looking at that. Uh, Paul. Patrick, I have two questions. One, can you release what type of gun it was? Was it a handgun rifle? Uh, it's just a gun at this point. Uh, and how many calls for service did you have over some of the years to that record? So just a quick search of that address. Uh, we responded to the IVC in January of 2022. Uh, there was a domestic related call in December of 2019 um, that there just appeared to have been an argument with no assault. Uh, and then January 30th of 2014, uh, there was an alleged assault again, but no PC for an arrest. And that's just a quick search that, that we've done. So four calls of service? Uh, I have so on the 3rd of January, 2022 is the day we served the IVC paperwork. On the 2nd, uh, there was a medical related call that's in our CAT system that we believe uh, probably predicated the involuntary commitment the next day. Um, I was gonna ask, do you guys know if he had um, any history of being violent that the women really have shared with you? Uh, on, on behalf of Mr. Creighton, uh, we, they have not uh, told us any information that he was uh, necessarily a violent person on a daily basis. The only information that we have up to this point is that he was suffering uh, with some mental illness. Um, you know, we, have an, we have an idea of what he was suffering with, but we're not out of respect for families. So we're going to just hold back on some of that for right now. Paul, again, thank you for your first. Um, have they ever been arrested by the police or any other models that you know, sir? Uh, not that we're aware of. Um, We've really only begun to scratch the surface of looking into everyone's history. Yes. Um, it's a possibility, but we, I don't have that information at this time. I don't believe he was. Uh, well, Chief mentioned that um, the officers are getting some uh, assistance due to the traumatic nature of this. I'm just curious as to do you know um, are the people who are able to flee from the house also getting assistance? We have offered uh, any assistance we can in that respect. Um, they, this, they have a very large extended family um, who has come in from out of town. And to my knowledge, they are being very supportive uh, of the two survivors that were affected by it. Um, to my knowledge, they have not sought any assistance from us directly, um, but I feel confident that the family as a whole is looking after the best interest. Guilford County Schools released a public statement saying, we are heartbroken and our thoughts are with the family. District crisis teams will be at both schools throughout the week. A GoFundMe was set up to build a memorial garden to pay tribute to each member of the family by Papa Thompson. So far it's raised nearly $3,000. The family of Athaliah Creighton issued a statement thanking the community for its support. Athaliah Athena Creighton and her wonderful children, Nasir, Nyla, and Kasim were alike to everyone they met, the family said. Their lives were taken too soon, yet their legacy lives on from the shores of Jamaica to the campus of North Carolina Agricultural and Technical College. The statement described Athaliah as a dedicated and loving mother. That her kind heart spilled onto her children who she loved so much that she would go through hardship for a season to make sure that they flourished. She was an amazing mother, committed wife, loving sister, and honorable daughter. She was everyone's best friend. The statement concluded by saying her family would continue to honor her and her children in the coming weeks with a memorial service and video statement. Funeral services were held on Saturday, January 27th in Greensboro, 
at the Alumni Foundation Event Center of North Carolina Kent State University. Robert Creighton Jr. does not fit the mold for most family annihilators who kill their families based on perceptions of power to regain their masculinity. Instead it appears mental illness was the driving factor. Robert Creighton Jr. appeared to be a successful actor building his career on the outside, but inside mental illness was tormenting him. His family attempted to get him help, but it ended in tragedy. It's a shame that his beautiful wife and three children died at the hands of someone who should have been there to protect them. May Athelia, Kasim, Naira, and Nasir all rest in peace. That concludes this episode, keep your eye out for the next volume, coming soon. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. Want to help support the channel you love, and get something in return? Simply purchase some Elizabeth's Chronicles merch. We have coffee mugs, t-shirts, sweatshirts, cozy blankets, beach towels, phone covers and more. Use the coupon code EC10OFF4U and get 10% off your order. The link to order is in the description area below this video. Thanks for helping Elizabeth's Chronicles continue to make the videos you love.